is up guys my name is commenting and today i have for you guys an attachment guide we have all barrels all tacticals all grips all scopes right here for you guys we're gonna be going over every single item that you see on this wall so sit back relax and enjoy some statistics firstly we have the suppressors military ranger and makeshift muffler Basically, military suppressor is for all the military guns, like Maple Strike or Heartbreaker or Eagle Fire, anything as such. And what this gun does is it greatly reduces the sound of your gun. As you can see, one shot brought it down to 97, and another shot brings it down to 94. You can shoot 34 shots with the military suppressor until it goes bye-bye. You can also use a makeshift muffler on this, but that's really for guns like a Hawkhound, where you can't put Ranger or Military, but you can put a makeshift muffler and this does reduce the noise but not as much and as you can see on this site it kind of blocks the site it's kind of garbage but it does reduce the sight so zombies don't pay attention when I shoot just like that as you can tell it's already at 80% the makeshift muffler only takes 10 shots until that muffler goes bye bye and doesn't work again and then you got to repair it next we have the ranger suppressor once once again like all the other suppressors it greatly reduces the sound of course, none of these suppressors do reduce damage or anything as such. All it does is reduce the sound so NPC zombies can't attract to you. The ranged suppressor does have the best durability at 50 shots. Even if you're on an easy server with no durability, your attachments will still take durability. Going to the rest of the barrels, we have the military barrel and the military muzzle, as well as the ranger barrel and ranger muzzle. Of course, military barrel and muzzle can go on military guns and same goes with the ranger barrel and ranger muzzle can go on ranger guns we have the zubeknikov and maple strike here for testing let's look at the recoil of the zubeknikov and as you can see it goes up and to the right let's put a military barrel on that and as you can see it goes up and to the right it doesn't fix that what the military barrel does do is fixes your hip fire basically as you can tell my aim is that without it it's that it's really a lot smaller and what this really does is when you're aiming it's going to be closer to where you're aiming at. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's just closer to where you're aiming at. The military barrel does the same exact thing. Now, barrels don't have any durability on it. That's why they're so beautiful. Let's go on to the muzzle of military and ranger, and that's when things get very interesting. Muzzles do have durability. 50 shots for military guns and 100 shots for ranger guns. And what the muzzles do is it not only stops the flash of the gun, it also helps the recoil of your gun. Let's take a look at the maple strike. Let's just shoot it. It goes, it goes like that, right? Let's take it off and see. As you can see with the muzzle, it's very much close. Without a muzzle, it just goes straight up. Let's go to a uh, Zubeknikov, because if you do know, I'm gonna just keep the barrel on. If you do know, it goes up and to the right. Let's put this muzzle on and let's see what happens. It goes the same exact thing, but just a little bit less. Basically, the muzzle fixes your recoil. It's a lot easier to spam with that than it is to spam with that, as you can tell. Muzzle is the way to go, in my opinion. Durability is, of course, annoying, but muzzle and barrel are the two best things. I'd say a barrel if you're in third person, muzzle if you're in first person. Now, since we got the barrels out of the way, let's go on to the tactical attachments. These are all pretty self-explanatory, but let me just go over them. Now, almost every gun has a tactical hook, meaning that you can put a tactical on the gun. There's four tacticals in the game. First off, adaptive chambering. This is normal shooting. This is with adaptive chambering. I don't know if you could tell, but you shoot a lot faster with adaptive chambering. Of course, no tacticals have durability. Rangefinder is good with snipers. You can see the range of your gun, and it will go as far as the gun is. Essentially, it shows if you can hit the target or not, which is actually very good if there's no bullet drop on the server. This is toggleable off or on. Having it on does emit a small light. It doesn't actually show as much as what it's showing right here. It does show a, a lot less than that, but it does show a little bit of light, just very weak. Going on, we have the tactical light. This is, of course, on and off, and it's really just a flashlight on your gun. This does alert zombies, so you do have to watch out on that, but this is great when you're going through the tunnels of Germany or the tunnels of Russia, and you want to have a gun out, just get that tactical light on, you'll be good to go. Next up, we have a tactical laser, which of course, once again, can be on and off, and it does emit light just like the rangefinder. What's good with a tactical laser, as you can see with the laser, and then without the laser, it does fix your spread, meaning you can shoot a lot closer, just like that, 
and like that, it's kind of hard to tell maybe, but the spread is a lot different. You get about 20% better spread than you would without the laser. One thing I did forget to mention on a tactical, there is a bayonet. I wouldn't really consider it an attachment because it's more of a weapon than anything else. It does do very weak damage, but the range is considerably long for just a little bayonet. What I find it really useful for, you don't really want to use it on players because it's not going to be of any use. It's great on zombies. Instead of shooting it, you just hit it, just a little two-shotter in the head of zombies. It's a lot easier than having to shoot the zombies and alert them all. Just have a little bayonet and just strike them. But of course, this is hard to obtain anyways, and it's not really a tactical in my eyes. It's more of a weapon. Next up, we have the grips. Horizontal, vertical, and bipod. Now, as you saw, the maple strike has a very much vertical recoil. So you wouldn't want to put a horizontal grip on that because if you put a horizontal grip, it's not going to do anything to fix that vertical recoil. Instead, put a vertical grip on it, and essentially... <laughs> It fixes it a lot more than a horizontal grip ever could. Going on to a Zubeknikov, because as you can tell, a Zubeknikov goes up and to the right. Meaning, if we put a horizontal grip on that, it will go more straight up. But if we put a vertical grip on that, it'll go more sideways. Essentially, it's pretty easy. Vertical helps up and down. Horizontal helps left to right. Now, you might be thinking, what does bipod actually do? Bipod does both only if you're in prone. Meaning... Those two combined make that. As you can tell, it goes in between the two. Of course, a bipod is always the way to go. With this maple strike, put on a bipod. It does basically the same as a vertical grip would, to be fair. If you really look at it, it, it does the same as a vertical grip really would. But if you have a gun like Zubeknikov that doesn't just go up or right, it goes up and to the right, then of course the bipod would really help. Or if you're using a sniper, because snipers are always really prone, it just helps a lot more. Also, one more thing, the bipod does help on spread. As you can tell, when you lay down, it's a lot better than if you don't have it. Don't have it? It's that big. Having it, it's that. It actually does a lot more on the spread. As well as if you have a laser connected to that, then your spread comes down to almost a little dot and it's so easy to aim with everything. Vertical grips and horizontal grips don't help with spread at all. Going from that, we have all the sights right here shown right above at the very top. There's not much to really show about these sights. They're all really just sights that you aim down holding your little right mouse button and look around. That's really all they are. It's your choice on what sight you exactly want to pick. They're all right here and you will see on the screen exactly how each one does. Like I said, no difference between them is just whatever you feel like. The only thing special about all of these is the makeshift scope, which you can make with binoculars and tape, which gives you a pretty good early game scope. What was the night vision scope, which of course gives you night vision when you zoom into it. Great for when it's nighttime. And if you're wondering, does the night vision scope emit any light? No, it does not. Essentially, you have night vision without anyone knowing that you have night vision. You can look down these scopes and no one can tell that you can see in the night because, of course, they can't see the light that's emitted from this scope. But that's really all that I have for you guys. Hope you enjoyed this attachment guide. It took a lot of work to make, a lot of editing to do, and hopefully it gives you guys a better understanding of all the attachments and which attachments you feel is best. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like the video if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new. Sorry about me keeping it at night. I completely forgot. But my name is Comedy, and I'm out of here. See you guys later. Welcome to the country crowd. We got the hamburger. We got the down. We got the special so nigga that's here. We don't fuck with plank and making it clear.